Hey, hello and God bless. Thank you for watching. I hope everyone is having a blessed week. Um, this is going to be part four of my study on Noah. And I've, I know I haven't made a video in quite a while. Uh, just some personal things going on in my life and, and uh, I've had some confirmations come through uh, on different things. And I'm trying to put all these pieces together. Um, a couple things he's led me to. Um, that I'm going to tell you right off the bat um, <laughs> sound very far-fetched but uh, uh, I'm going to get into to one of them on this video and I'll probably have to do two to finish this series up uh, what I've discovered is a lot of things are tied together the 144,000, the ark um, the harvest uh, the days of darkness uh, the three days of darkness for some it, he's he's told me a lot of things and I'm trying to organize everything so I'm gonna just start off step by step and I'm gonna show you what I have right now and uh, we'll go and we'll see where this uh, this video goes to so one thing he wanted me to look at is God instructed Noah to build an ark 300 cubits long by 50 cubits wide 30 cubits high and when you figure the volume of the ark, square cubits of space, actually inside the ark itself, itself that comes to 450,000. So just keep that in your mind, 450,000. Now, Jesus has a numeral value to his name. And that number is 3168. And the Lord, Jesus Christ, he, if you go into the Greek and you do the sums, the Greek alphabet is a lot like the Hebrewic alphabet. The, the numbers have numeric, numeric meanings. For example, if it was our alphabet, A would be 1, B2, 3C, 4D, and so on and so forth. When you do that with um, Lord Jesus Christ in the Greek, you get 800 for Lord Jesus, 888, Christ, 1480 and the sum of that is 3168 okay so with that if we look in the word for 3168 every time this is brought up it explains the attributes of Jesus Christ for example the phrase mediator between God and men 1 Timothy 2 5 in the Greek that comes up to 3,168, pointing to Jesus Christ as the mediator. Even more amazing is in when you do this with the Hebrew, okay, because the Old Testament was Hebrew, if you go to Isaiah 53, 11, okay, also that totals up to 3,168. And we can go to that verse real quick. So Isaiah 53 is the... Um, it's the prophet Isaiah saying about the man of sorrows. And if we go down here to 53.11, he shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Okay, so this is the Hebrew, and this totals also the same number, which is 3168. So it talks about his priestly, priestly, I'm sorry, and sacrificial roles. All right, of Christ, three one six eight. Then we have this. Then there's the curious relationship between man measurements in Germania. For Bethlehem, the birthplace of Christ, has the latitude of three one point six eight degrees north. The floor dimensions of Solomon's temple were specified to be sixty cubits by twenty cubits. Verse 3 also identifies the cubit to be used according to the old standard, Okay, although there is some debate whether this was about 20.5 or 19.8. We will take the latter, the Babylonian cubit, and we also get 160 times 19.8 inches, 3,168. If we look at these numbers individually, we know that 3 is the trinity, 1 is unity of the trinity, 6 is man, and 8 has always been the new beginning. And if you multiply those numbers by themselves, 3 times 1 times 6 times 8, you get 144, or 12 times 12. All right, we'll come back to this as well. 
And let's look at the number five. Number five represents God's grace, seen, through, seen throughout the scripture of the tabernacle in the wilderness. You had the pillars were five cubits apart, five cubits high. The altar was five cubits by five, five pillars. Okay, you can go on and on. And that talks about all the different um, measurements of five. There's five original priests, Aaron and his four sons. Daniel proclaimed the fifth, the fifth kingdom to be the everlasting kingdom. And that is, the, of course, the Lord's kingdom. Jesus bled from five different wounds, his hands, his feet, and the spear in his side. If we go to the fifth trumpet in Revelation 9, 9 1, the fifth angel sounded, and a star fell from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. It goes later on that this is Apollyon in the Greek or um, Abaddon in Hebrew. This is, folks, the announcement of God's kingdom being introduced. What has to happen, and this is my opinion, is when this angel sounds, this fifth age will begin. The church age will close. Satan, the star fallen from heaven all right, to the earth, will become the ruler of this world. When this happens, the switch has to happen. The church, the bride of Christ, will be taken out. And this is when I believe the rapture will occur. You cannot have Satan, I don't believe, and the, you can't have Satan and the church here at the same time. And then, we, of course, we have the locusts that come upon the earth. Now, that's just, um, you know, my two cents on this. But uh, this is when Satan, I believe, will be cast down to the earth at this point in time. Now, let's go back. We have five as the number of preparations. The first five books of the Bible prepare you for Israel's story throughout the rest of the Bible. You have five wise and five foolish virgins. Um, five were not prepared and five were. And then it gives you a total of ten. You have the Ten Commandments. Dave, David took up five smooth stones to kill Goliath, and preparing to kill him. And then you have five perfect uh, saints for the ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It's through these five that the gospel goes throughout the whole world. Um, five is also an indication of recompense or bounteous reward. Thieves must repay five times the value of oxen they steal. Benjamin honored Joseph with five times more food than his brother. So this goes on with number five. So let's put these numbers together and see what we get. So 450,000 was our total volume of the ark. Remembering that Jesus was 3168 and we got 144 by multiplying those numbers. If we take the number of grace and preparation and reward, which is 5 times 144, we get the 450,000. Now what I was thinking was that each of these fives would be symbolic for one of these reasons. This five right here being grace. This five right here prepared. This five right here reward. This five right here, I don't know. And then I don't know if I'm missing something. But anyway, if we take five fives times 40, 144, we get the 450,000. Now, now this is where you remember back there we had the 12 times 12. We took Jesus' number, 3 times 6, I'm sorry, 3 times 1 times 6 times 8. We got 144, which is also 12 times 12. <laughs> what the Lord is trying to show me that I cannot figure out for the life of me yet is that the disciples and the 12 tribes in Revelation, and I'd have to look at the verse, I think it's Revelation 7, I think, off my head, the ones that are sealed, he had 12,000 from each tribe. What the Lord was trying to tell me is there's a connection between the disciples and them. 
And so what I started doing, and I'm going to put this up here, even though it's not a completed study, which I really don't like doing, but maybe there's someone out there that can help me, is you have the disciples' names, and you have the names of the 144. Yeah, it was Revelation 7. There's a connection between all of this. And um, I'm not going to read through all these. I'm going to leave them up here so you can look at them. Um, and there's some obvious connections. Um, and I have a few of them down here that I've kind of worked on. Uh, but you have like Jude, praised, Asher, happy. Peter means stone, Reuben inspect, as in they went to inspect the tomb and the stone was rolled away. So I I wanted to put this up here. Maybe there's someone who can help me. Um, Matthew, gift of reward. Ishtar also means reward. So I hate doing this, but I'm going to do it. You know, I need help. So if someone can help me. Uh, you have the holder of the heel, which is James. And there's some interesting ones here, like um, you have cord or thread, struggles or fights. And then we know that the, the holder of the heel, we know that story's connected. And I'd have to look at the story um, where the two twins were fighting in the womb. And then the arm came out, and she tied a, the red rope to it. Remember, and then the red rope of Rahab also tied into all of that back in our Joshua study. So anyway, I'm putting this up here, but there, he is telling me that there is a connection between the two. Now what's really frustrating is when I go to search these names online, I obviously try to find biblical websites that would give me the really um, down uh, the biblical meaning to these names and some of them are different. Uh, so I'd have to, you know, I have to put them all down and just different things. So it's just been kind of frustrating. But anyway, what my point is out of all of this is this is all connected, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I have a few videos. This is uh, probably going to be a very long video. I have three videos from three different people, two or three videos from a couple different people that are going to talk about, um, one of them is a lady who I've been following for a long time. She had a vision that she was on some sort of safe house. And then there is a guy named the Grox who shows things in Google Earth, and he shows an ark in the earth. And you'll see here in a minute how this all ties together. Um, but I'm going to come right out and say it. Uh, I believe the ark is going to be a ship. I believe that there is going to be an ark coming out of the sky that we are going to go on. And there is a time thing... A t a t uh, how do I put this? There is, time is going to change. And I don't mean times as in the times are changing. I mean time itself is going to change. In my dreams and a lot of the dreams I've had, um, I remember one specific dream, time stood still. And I remember being outside my home and I remember dust in the air and it was frozen in place. And I remember putting my hand through it and and just in amazement. The Lord shared something very, very, very neat with me the other day. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, you know what, if, if you don't believe me, that's fine. Um, I'm human. I might have misinterpreted, but I don't think I have because um, a sister in Christ also felt the same thing. There was a lady that I watch, um, God's Servant 346. I'll put her link down below. And she had a dream and the Lord told her the church would be here throughout the blood moons 2014 2015 and when I heard that I was a little disheartened uh, to be honest because with the if you're a YouTube follower like myself on all these prophetic times you know time is very short and Jesus Christ messages to everybody is extremely urgent to the point of people are thinking are thinking weeks months maybe you know I don't know but here's what I did know, and here's what the Lord did tell me. I prayed over that that video. I was like, Father, if this is true, um, how can you know this be true? Uh, if it, if it is true, or is there any way you can explain it to me? And I took it for what it was worth, and I just kind of sat on it and prayed about it. And and one day, 
I was talking with a sister about the three days of darkness, and I, I don't even know where this came from, but I said in my uh, text message to her, I said, three days for some, three years for others. And she goes, I was thinking that same exact thing at that very moment when I read that. And so we immediately started talking, and we both received confirmations of um, this being true. In all my videos in, in the Days of Darkness, it talks about in Isaiah, and I'm going to go to the verse first. Okay, so here's the verse I'm talking about. And come, my people, enter into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were. For a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed, for behold, the Lord come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for inequity, and the earth also shall disclose her blood, and show more, cover her slain. I thought this verbiage was very, very interesting. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment. Almost like... I don't know. I, I find that absolutely strange. Now, I asked the Lord, is there any other place that, that I can get an answer for this? And he showed me this verse. Okay, so I'm in First Chronicles 21, uh, roughly 9. And what has happened is David has sinned, and the Lord is speaking through Gad. And uh, bear with me, folks. I, I, I'm in the middle of reading Kings and Chronicles. They're the last couple books I have to finish, and I think that's why the Lord brought me to these last, is because this is the, the timing of him is perfect. Um, so bear with me. I don't know these stories very well. Um, I'm just, I feel like I'm kind of grasping at straws a little bit, but this is what he, he showed me, and I didn't even, God, he's just amazing. But anyway, this is what he, he told me. He goes, go tell David, thus saying the Lord God, I offer three things. Offers him three things. Choose one of the three that it may be done unto thee. So Gad comes to David and says unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Choose three things, either three years of famine, three months to be destroyed by your foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtake thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. So, gosh, what this means to me is, is God is showing me there's going to be obviously half the tribulation and then the, the, the second half is, of course, the wrath of God being poured out. And that's just the only ones I think that will be here, those that have taken the mark and those that are manipulated their DNA and, and that's going to happen. But the first three years is going to be famine. Three months to be destroyed by your foes. I don't know if that's the red horse riding through, destroying everything. Or you have the sword of the Lord, which we know um, through the, the past studies that we've done here. The sword of the Lord are the angels of his indignation. They come from the far reaches of heaven. Uh, those are the, 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 the ones coming out of the pit. Uh, the, the, the Lord's armory, so to speak. Three days of that, and then if you're, you're of course... Uh, saved in your in your in your home, these things are going to pass over. Um, and the angel of the Lord, and it even says right here, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts. So, folks, I haven't hope I haven't confused you more than what I feel I'm confused. Um, but this is what the Lord's telling me, and you know, all I can tell you is pray to Him. May he give you a different answer or the same answer or confirm what I'm telling you here. But here's what has been laid on my heart. And those in the house, those those under the protection of the Lord are going to see three days of uh, three days of, of chaos going outside their homes. And it's just like Sodom and Gomorrah. You don't go outside, you don't look out the windows, you don't you know, you you stay in your home, you stay in the word, you stay in prayer, just like the uh, uh, the prophecy that we discussed from uh, that lady. You stay inside, you cover the doors, cover the windows, you continue in prayer. The indignation is going to be going on outside. 
while this is going on, three years is going to pass outside. Three days will pass for the believers inside. That's what he's telling me. And, um, you know, I'm going to make a separate video on this, and maybe if I can find some more information um, I'll, and put it all together in one. I do want to continue with this video um, with uh, the other witnesses that have uh, s shown a ship coming, uh, a safe house, if you will. What I think is going to happen as far as the rapture, and this, once again, is my thought, is there's going to be this, you have the, the spies, and then you have the Israelites. The spies were selected out of the Israelites to go into the city to do God's work, to do the work of Joshua, who portrays Jesus in that story. The spies are sent out into the city, and they discover Rahab, who hides them and puts them they are hidden under flax under their fine linen, and they will go into the city, and they're going to bring those that want the Lord uh, to the Lord. The Israelites are going to be protected in their homes, just as the Israelites were protected in Exodus, just as the Israelites were protect, pr protected in Joshua. While three years is going on outside into the city for those spies, they're going to be doing the Lord's work. Those back in, uh, outside in their homes are going to see three days. And then they will all ascend together. And that's, that's my thoughts on it. Um, anyway, I'm going to go to the other videos. When we were in, in this place, sitting down like that, we were all in this ginormous safe house. It was huge. This house was huge. It had like a football field in there. It had uh, jump houses for, you know, like kids' birthday parties. They go in those little jump houses. Well, it had that in there for children and all sorts of stuff for kids. Uh, it had tons and tons of room. Each person had a room. Um, or it, it was a safe house. Well, we were in there occupying our time. That's what we were doing. We were in there occupying time. Okay. Some were swimming. There was people swimming. Uh, there was children bouncing in the jump houses. Um, there was some, some of the uh, brothers and sisters were throwing football. These were all brothers and sisters. There was a lot of people from YouTube I've seen in there, too. Um, then I, and I remember seeing people I didn't even know, and everybody was so happy. Uh, then I remember after we did each of those, I saw each of those, I went into a room and got anointing oil. I was inside the building. Like, everything was inside this, like, this safe bubble kind of thing. Um, okay, so then I was told to anoint all the doors and windows. So after I found this anointing oil, I went and grabbed it, and then I went and anointed all the doors and windows. And I put my finger, I dipped it in the olive oil, and I put a cross on all the doors and all the windows. Um, I just remember it was so easy gliding my finger onto the door and making a cross. And I remember I was binding all evil spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. I remember saying it. I actually remember saying that in my dream. I said, I bind all evil spirits in the mighty name of Jesus that no evil may enter. And I just kept doing it. And there was tons and tons and tons of doors. It, like each brother and sister had their, their own room. And I remember anointing all of it. Just remember anointing it. <clears throat> the safe house was huge. Um, and also, I do remember running on a football field. Just, we were, like, there was tons of us out there. We were just having so much fun. Everybody was smiling and laughing. And I was running with Shannon Johnson, Mr. Bull Soldier for Christ. I was running with him. A group of us were running. We were all running. And he was there. He was running. We were all running together. Um, dude, <laughs> oh, my gosh. I swear I saw the glorified body of you. Like, I kid you not. Like, you were stacked. Like, big, 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 like a warrior for Christ. You were, like, literally a giant, like, warrior. It was it was awesome. It was so awesome. It was so cool. Uh, we were just all laughing. And then, also in that dream, and in the part where I saw the little children jumping in the jump house, I went in there and I was jumping with them. We were all having fun jumping. And um, all of a sudden, a lot of brothers and sisters and myself, we saw a bunch of angels. I'm not talking about dark, deceptive angels. I'm talking about heavenly angels. Uh, they were childlike sizes. Like, these angels were small. And they were golden. Like, gold glowing off of them. And they had bright bursts of little white lights throughout their, their little spirits of their 
of their little their little angel bodies. Um, it was beautiful. They were like, it, it, I don't even know how to describe it. Like some had blonde hair, really golden blonde hair. Some had dark hair. They were beautiful, beautiful, and they were just playing. And it was so safe, and it was all in the safe house. should realize that we've mapped out all of London over here. Here is that arc ready to go. You have to be chosen to go with the Lord Jesus Christ with this rapture type situation to become as a pillar in the temple of God. It's right in the word of God. I'm sorry if your preachers do not teach this or if they just want to show other things. But we have mapped all of this out over here. Even this one coming, this big diamond, represents the marriage coming. This is the accuser cast down. This boat is waiting, waiting to go over there right in San Diego, as we showed, when the ego is destroyed. San Diego is going to be hit so hard that it's going to move the earth. Just like he just said, the, we leave the day the accuser goes down as... As Satan is tossed out of heaven, we will go up. It's an exchange. They get Satan, the earth does, we get to go home. To open the pits of hell and release everybody at this point in time. It's the wrath of the Lamb coming. Most of America will be destroyed from the, from the west coast to the east coast at this point in time. They have all of the USA set and ready to go. There's our ark. We go up here. It's different than going down here. Down here is all of the great tribulation. Here is even Obama taking his mask off. See a mask on one side, a face on the other. And he's revealing himself and blowing everything up. And then you can even see over here the rabbit for the trickster. And then this big dragon for the mark of the beast coming. This person giving out this red pill deception over here. But we go up here to the temple of God called the shepherd's bush. It's all I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, yeah, all this is mapped out. He, he, I've probably seen 200 videos um, from Mark. Uh, everything is symbolic, folks. Every single thing has a meaning. This is called Shepherd's Bush. This, basically, this red rope pulls us right through, all the way up to here to the Temple of God. So, um, but I wanted to show you how that arc is um, easy to see, and I'm going to show you one more video from him, uh, so that you can just confirm. The lion right here. You can see the arc. You can even see that it maps out the star systems with the Milky Way and Orion and then going up to the Pleiades right there. All perfect right in front of us. And then we're all leaving at that point in time. Heaven is in the Pleiades star system in the shoulder of the bull. You can even see Jesus and the stone crashing to break us all loose right over here. He's right there. That's his head. Bam! And he smashes us all loose. This is actually, when I mapped all of this out, this represents the USA. An event down near San Onofre, and then another end time event up here down up near San Francisco. Okay, I want to interrupt Mark here for just a minute and talk about this um, stone that's coming out of the mountain. I'm sorry, the stone that's cut without hands that's going to come crashing to the earth. This is the same stone that's in Daniel 2.45, for it says, For as much thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it broke in pieces the iron and brass and clay and the silver and the gold. So it disintegrated the statue. And it, when the stone hits, it hits the feet, and it hits the feet and destroys the whole statue. The feet, if you remember, are made of iron and clay, all right? And this is the kingdom. This is the final kingdom.
Now remember Mount Ararat where the ark landed. Okay, there's a couple things that are very, very interesting about Mount Ararat. The first thing I want to discuss and talk about is Mount Ararat we traced back to the, it's called the U-R-A-R-T-U, the Utartu, Utartu. And those are, that was the kingdom that birthed the Iron Age. It's where the Iron Age came from. So right where the very ark rested and landed was on the Iron Age, essentially. You could say that, okay? So we, let's take it a step further. Okay, so this is a picture of Mount Ararat. And as you can see, it has two peaks. And what Mark is saying is down near San Onofre Power Plant in California, there is a nuclear power station there. Now the ark landed here, and what he is suggesting is that the ark will land at those two peaks, and that's where the cataclysmic event will take place. Once again, this is a very open uh, video. You know, it's up to your interpretation. It's between you and the Lord, um, but that is what um, he has been shown, and that's also what I've been led to believe as well. So now this is a picture of the San Onofre power plant, the two peaks. And if you watch Mark's channel, there's he goes into so much symbolism, and it talks about the breasts, and, and he shows everything in the hieroglyphs, he shows everything in the Dendera charts, he shows everything. This guy has broken the whole world apart. God has given him an extraordinary gift. But anyway, that's the symbolism I wanted to show you, is the Twin Peaks. That's exactly where the Ark is going to land. Now, I don't know if that's where Satan's cast down or the stone's going to fall, but the Ark will be in some sort of uh, uh, follow-on event or at that same time. But I think that's, that's the symbolism behind those two things something will happen. Both of these events on the West Coast blast us all loose. And the USA is gone at this point in time. This will change the whole Earth. It's a very big event, as we keep showing. Right there, it even says, I am. So let's spin that back around. It even says, I am, right there. You can actually see the I the A, and a little bit of the M right there. See his face perfectly? Look at that. That is perfect. All right here. As I say, we're, we're not making just random claims on our channel. We were told by God to go and show all of his things. I was called a long time ago. And I was told to go and show all of these things and that not many people would believe me, but it didn't even really matter. The point was that it was all done and it's all been shown to us and that he would draw the people that he wanted to know and to see and to not really worry about it, just to keep on going. So there we are. There's that arc we keep showing. And that's going to conclude this video. So, um, you know, a lot of information, um, a lot of stuff to pray about. Uh, and uh, But God bless. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to try to do another video on this three days, three years, uh, after I can get some prayer in about it and, uh, and put some stuff together. But anyway, it kind of went hand in hand with this. And... Um, you know, hopefully it gives you something to think about and studies as well. Thanks for watching. God bless. Take care.